Hello and welcome back, and that is right, it's time to return to this, the RT6600AX. During my reviews uh, last month, if I remember correctly, I did a little bunch of hardware and software stuff on this device, kind of seeing what it can do, what it can't do, but I didn't do an extensive amount of testing. At the time, I said I didn't want to do it until I could use these. These are the MR2200ACs. They've been around for more than a couple of years. These are the mesh extension routers for the Synology router system. And we were waiting for a software update that will allow us to connect these with this. And now it is available. And the release candidate firmware for SRM 1.3 dropped within a day. I was already ready to rock starting to do all of my tests. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at several little blibs and blobs, some of which involve these, some of which don't, but ultimately little little tiny tests that none of them I believe were big enough for their own standalone video. We're gonna be doing uh, bandwidth and coverage testing on this device. We're going to be setting this up with and without mesh router points, and then seeing in terms of proximity what our link speed is with the device to see what benefits we have with utilizing the mesh routers in, very important, the network, not internet speeds. Then we're also going to be looking at how long it takes this system to reallocate a node if it disconnects for any reason, how long it takes for a node to be reconnected to the system. Then we're gonna be doing another test where we're going to be connecting these devices with ethernet cables, and then we're gonna be disconnecting those ethernet cables to see how long it takes the system to switch over to a wireless connection, and indeed, if it does at all. And finally, we're gonna be utilizing, where's my mobile phone? I don't know where it is. We're gonna be using a phone with a mobile connection and testing failover internet connections on this device. We're gonna have a WAN and a 5G SIM card connected to this device via a mobile with tethering and see what happens if we disconnect the WAN, how quickly it switches over to the secondary internet connection. Those are our tests. So this is the introduction. Why don't we crack on with test number one, which is going to be that router mesh building testing. So let's crack on with that right now. Okay, so I'm going to start making my way through the building now while we've got the two mesh nodes, as you can see here on screen. And we're going to repeat this in a little while using no nodes at all. So as we make our way into my office here, we can see behind me, there we go, there's the router just behind me. And we'll start moving around between the different node points. Bear in mind at one point we may lose connection with Synology Router Manager while I'm doing this because as we get handed over between each of the node points, it may invalidate the security uh, protocol that's been established between each of those points. So behind me is another node point there. I can start making my way over here, slightly further away. There is the disconnection as mentioned. There's the other corridor down there. We'll start making our way back, and instead of going back to the office, we're going to make our way to the next node, which is just over here. And from here, we can see that the router uh, bandwidth there is dipping, because obviously we're being handed around now to 2.4 gigahertz nodes as we travel. We'll sit down here, have a little look. I apologize for the jumpiness of the recording there, but I have my hands full there with all the different stuff. But as we can see, according to the Wi-Fi analyzer, we've still got 526 megabits. It will dip down as we're moving around. Uh, we did lose connection to the router there. And if we make our way into the Synology Assistant tool, I can see that if I refresh it, it's going to say connection failed. The reason being that as we're moving around, our identity is changing. That will be something that we could go in and patch into the new changed IP via this other router point here. But again, you can affix these. I've got these set to dynamic at the moment that you so you can avoid this. But just for this test, I've kept it open. But for now, as we're down to around 351 megabits per second, I can start making my way back to the office. And this time, what I'm going to do is instead of making my way back that way, I'm gonna start going to an area that has no connection, which means this is gonna be an example is it where you would need to put a mesh node point. As I make my way around a circle here, we're gonna to start to see that connection drop all the way down to zero um, as it goes down. And now we're getting closer to the original router, as you can see, which is why we've seen that spike there in terms of network coverage. And now, as we make our way back to the office, making our way back onto the original concourse, you're going to see 
that performance start going, making its way back up to 1200 megabits as I make my way back to my desk and sit down, hopefully not making too much noise for you guys. And we can have a little look and see the Wi-Fi router begin to reattach and we're gonna start seeing that connection dip back up to the original performance. We can see there that the connections are now being re-established. We can see the router there has reappeared and we can go over there, go back into it there. We've had to re-establish our security certificate. But as we make our way in, log straight in, trying to do this one-handed is a bit of a bugger. Uh, we'll go there. It, the Wi-Fi analyzer has yet to uh, re-establish. Let's have a look there. Nothing ever goes perfectly. Trying to type my password one-handed, absolute nightmare. As we see, we make our way back in. We're going to Wi-Fi connect. And there we go. There we are re-established with the router. There's all of our access points there. And ultimately for me, that's showing that we were handed between all those points. Now we're gonna repeat the exact same test. And this time we're gonna have no nodes all dotted around. Okay, so now we're going to repeat everything we just did, but this time only using that primary 6600AX router. It is a good router, but bear in mind, even if it's Wi-Fi 6 and utilizing 5 gigahertz bandwidth, bear in mind that 5 gigahertz frequency we just mentioned has a smaller coverage area than 2.4 gigahertz, where Wi-Fi 6 doesn't really have any place. Now, right now, I'm at our original starting point here. You can see both of those mesh nodes on screen are now having no, none of it. They're completely trying to re sync they will list as an invisible very shortly and we'll start making our way back through the building here as you can see it's now listed them as completely disconnected it's given up because obviously i've disconnected them um, now we're going to repeat all the steps that we did earlier on i'm not smart enough to do it with any synchronicity but hopefully we'll get it as close as we can as we can see the wi-fi router is starting to creep into the wi-fi 5 territory it will go in to the wi-fi 6 shortly over there is the router underneath us. We've got the two mesh nodes that I've disconnected and we'll start making our way along through the building once again. And as we get further away from it, this is where we're gonna to start to see that performance go way, way, way down compared to what we saw before. Uh, much like earlier, we're making our way into the foyer bit right here. Behind me is where the original points were. And of course that one's not there anymore. We can make our way along, have a little look along here. And as you can see, our signal's getting absolutely piss poor, so we can carry on. <laughs> I'm just waving to a neighbor, wondering what the hell I'm doing walking around this building, but never mind. Uh, we'll carry on along here where the other transit point originally was. And as you can see, right now we're down to 140, 130 megabits per second. So that signal is getting particularly bad there. If we make our way down to the seat before, we're down to 65, 48 megabits. And this gives you some idea about the extra coverage of network performance that that really did bring to the table there. So what we're gonna do now is start making our way back as we get down as low as 51 megabits per second distance. And again, the route has done well to at least be accessible from this distance, but shortly the route is probably gonna log us out because our security credentials are invalid because we would have broken connection. And as we go the long way around here, we're gonna be able to maybe see that connection start vaguely to reconnect as we get to the end of this corridor. I guess the main point here is about how that data is being handed between each of those mesh node points. And that's gonna be really important for people that are looking to establish a much wider network connection. The key word there is network, of course, because we're not running and testing the internet speed here, we're testing the network speed, which is, I would argue, a great deal more important in terms of personal and you know, business uh, network setups to make sure all your devices can communicate. But as we make our way back into the NAS Compare Studio here, we'll go along, I'll try not to break my laptop. That link speed should hopefully recommence in just a moment as we've got back to the router. As we can see, it has leapt back up as it's re-established that connection to the original router, which it had clearly lost connection of when it was at 51 megabytes, when it was already re-establishing connection. So rather than all of the individual router points, it was only communicating with one. And now we're at that uh, 1,000 megabits per second. It will creep up to 1,200 very shortly. But for me, that kind of proves 
and indicates just how well those individual node points were carrying the signal from the original 6600 into each of those 2200 ACs. Okay, so in this test, we're going to see how long it takes the Synology router to re-establish connection with mesh points if they've been disconnected, be it accidentally or whatever. So what we're going to do is we've got our RT6600AX and we've got two MR2200s, as you can see on screen, both of which are connected, but obviously you've got a video there showing all of them connected just slightly off camera. And what I'm going to do really quickly is just head over and turn them off. So there you go, both of our mesh points have now been turned off. So what's going to be interesting to see now is how long it takes for the system to notice that it has disconnected from them. Now, at the moment, I can still see the user interface and without closing this tab, I can duplicate it there. And clearly, I'm still accessing the router via the primary access point, even though all of those bits were all in the room. As you can see, they've already started to disconnect. It's trying to still find that other one, but it has completely lost connection with them. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to get our timer back on screen, if I can find it there on the bottom. And from there, I'm going to start our uh, countdown into reconnecting it. Can you see it on the bottom tab? That was annoying, wasn't it? Let's give it a go. Let's kick off with this three, two, one, go. Okay, so normally these units take around two minutes to boot up. So I reckon we're looking at a, a complete cold boot of around two to three minutes there. So what I'm going to do now is completely fast forward to see how long it has taken this router, the MR, uh, the RT6600AX, to re-establish that connection. Let's fast forward. Oh, it looks like we have something. Okay, and we're starting to see the re-establishment of that connection. I'm going to stop the clock there because even though it hasn't added the green tick, that means it's synchronizing right now. It has at least found the Wi-Fi point and it's now establishing that connection. So again, yeah, from a cold boot, not including the time it took me to get off my ass and actually press the button. I've got to say a minute and a half to re-establish connection and start resynchronizing. And now we can see in under two minutes, full complete box tick connection. To me, that's pretty darn impressive. Next up, this is less of a test and more of a did you know, but when you do connect mesh points to your primary Synology router, do you know that you have the option of both wired and wireless connectivity? You probably did know that during setup, <clears throat> but what you might not know is once you synchronize a device via either of those means, it recognizes the identity of those mesh points for both of them. It carries over all of that information. Case in point, I've reconnected these wireless mesh nodes as a wired connection there. Then they were, when they were first set up, they were wired nodes. And this is what happens when you disconnect a wired, uh, a wired mesh node from the system. Let's go for it now. And what I'm gonna do is when I come back, I'll click play. And as you can see, I'm gonna put the timer on, it's, even though it's absolutely pointless, that as soon as I've disconnected them there from the LAN, they've immediately hopped over to a wireless connection. As you can see, it's taken advantage of one of, one of, one of, uh, one of the five gigahertz bands there. And the second one in due course will connect. And in this case, it's chosen to piggyback off of the other wireless node. Now, do bear in mind, it will reanalyze the situation over time and maybe move that device onto one of the primary connections there for it. But still, nonetheless, it's really nice that it has that kind of innate inbuilt hopping that took place, I know it says 30 seconds on the clock, but that took place in less than 15 seconds for it to transfer from a wired to a wireless connection there, which is, for me, pretty impressive. So our last test is going to be looking at utilizing a mobile phone as a failover. That's right, with this device, if you're not already aware, with the RT6600AX, you can utilize a few supported USB SIM dongles or utilize some supported mobile phones in order to tether them to the router and have a second internet connection, which can then be utilized as a failover. Yes, you can also use it as your primary connection if you choose, 
But what I'm going to show you now is the failover. We're going to see just how well that works. So I've already tethered this phone to the device. For those that aren't aware, if you're using an Android phone, connect the phone to the USB port, pull down, you'll get the option to go into USB choices and settings. Don't go to file transfer, select the one USB tethering. When you've done that, head into the router as you can see here in front of me and if we go to the internet settings there we can make our way over to the mobile network and as you can see it has now got access to that second internet connection there so we've got one internet connection coming in via the WAN and another one coming in via that USB connection there on the mobile phone given our internet connection so what do we want to do next thing we want to do is go into smart WAN and from smart WAN we want to check the interface priority this is really important because when the internet connection is severed from the WAN port there, it will go through a, a number of services there to find an alternate connection for failover. So what we want to do, we can see that the uh, mobile internet connection from that SIM is um, available there. So we want to move that up into the priority list there. So let's move it up. And there we go. Now, the mobile connection should be the next one that gets interfaced to as soon as, as you can see, the mobile network there will click apply. And as soon as I know, as we can see that it's saved there, what I'm going to do is head into the connection. We've got the Wi-Fi Connect there uh, already on screen. We've got the mobile dongle there. So what I'm going to do, nice and simple, is disconnect our WAN. So now we no longer have that WAN connection there. And now it's going to be utilizing just this mobile phone internet there, which, again, I've got you know quite a lot of ceiling above me here and on the floor. So consequently... Chances are we're not going to get a great connection out of this, but if we make our way in to that smart WAN there, we can see that the WAN interface is now completely disconnected and inactive, but we've got the failover there, which is switched over there to that mobile dongle. I'll even go one more than that. We can see I'm still connected on this router to that Wi-Fi connection there. It's still on there. It's still active. We can go in. Again, the connection's not going to be fantastic. Let's be realistic. But at the same time, we've at least got that connection there. And moreover, we can go with a speed test there. Go for a nice, a nice quick, easy, fast Google speed test. And as we can see, we are still using, you know, a 5G SIM in a 4G phone. This is a Google Pixel 2XL. But we've still got that internet connection there. And for me, that means that failover did exactly its job. So well, let's go ahead and reconnect that there. Let's go in. And see how quickly it re-establishes that WAN connection there. Because hopefully we should see a change there on screen from active to active. And boom. Was that six or seven seconds? I'm not even sure it was. Um, and there you go. That gives you some idea about just how quick the failover is on the RT6600. I'm going to wrap things up there. I hope you've enjoyed these individual tests in today's video. I know it's been a bit of a long one. Um, do let me know if you have enjoyed this video again. I'm probably not going to revisit the subject of the RT6600 for a while now, um, but unless you guys come up with anything in particular you'd like to see tested and there's enough demand for it, I'll do that. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. There's links to all of the tests, all the reviews, all of the guides, all of the comparisons on this router right here linked in the description. I hope you've enjoyed it or go through the playlist. Click like if you've enjoyed the video, subscribe if you want to learn more. And again, if you are thinking of buying this router or any uh, of the Synology router series, please use the links in the description. It helps the channel and it helps me make more and more content for you guys as well as on the blog. Otherwise, I will see you next time.